Right, welcome back. I just thought that the last video that we did was slightly challenging. So this one is going to be more fun. Okay, now this is a product or like a food shot. And this is an area where I actually use generative fill a lot. Okay, so if you've done, uh, for example, my food photography course or my product photography course, there I emphasize a lot on using the correct background and also using a lot of props uh, you know, in the background or in the foreground to enhance the shot. Now, the problem with props especially, and even with the backdrop, is that you always don't have the correct props, right? As if you want to add some blueberries, for example, behind, right? You always don't have access to them, but now thanks to Generative Fill, you can do that very easily and in a realistic manner, uh, you know, just right inside Photoshop. So first of all, what we're going to do is, uh, let's do the easy thing, which is, uh, let's say instead of this, I want a wooden textured background. So how are we going to do that? First of all, remember, we need to select the subject. We're going to go over to select subject. All right, then we're going to inverse this selection. So we mainly want to select this part, okay, up till here. So we're going to say select inverse. And now we also, so right now it's pretty perfect, right? Because this whole thing was in focus. So Photoshop was easily able to do this job, but we all, all only need up till this point, right? We just want to change the background. So what we can do now is we need to subtract this in a very defined way, right? So do we have some tool which is like a rectangular selection tool? Yes, we do have, which is one of the oldest tools, which is the rectangular marquee tools. If I select this, and now if I just hold down Alt Option, now what I can do is, let's say up till here, I can just remove this from the selection. So now we know for sure that when we enter the prompt here inside Generative Fill, it's only going to work in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and type something like wooden texture. Okay, let's see what this does. All right, let's wait for this. And yeah, isn't that absolutely beautiful? Just totally enhance the image, giving it so much of variation between the you know, the surface and the background. And now after the latest update, okay, uh, we actually get four versions. So you can see here. And so this all keeps changing after each update, though we will add something. And I think I like the first one the best, right? This really, really uh, enhance the shot. Also, let's start to add some props here. So let's say I wanted to add any sort of fruits or any items like a basket or something behind and that's usually done in product and food shots, right? So let's say if we just select this area over here, okay, not this much. I would just like that to be down a bit, like something like this, okay? And let's say we just wanna add a bit of blueberries. Those are pretty popular props which are placed in food shots behind. So say blueberries and we'd also type in blurred, okay? Or let's just, first of all, just type in blueberries because we want to see if Photoshop is able to get that blur automatically by noticing the surroundings. We're just going to type blueberries. Let's see what this gives. All right, let's wait for this. And this doesn't look like blueberries, but you can see the third variation probably does. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. And what's the fourth one? No. Okay, let's just try this once more so that we have total of eight variations. All right, let's check this out. This one is okay. And this, the leaves are in focus. So I think out of all of these, I think this one was the best. Now, let's just say that it gives you a result in which it's not looking blurred, okay? In that case, what you can do is, remember this layer is selected. You can also do this a bit manually. So you can, once the layer is selected, you can always go up to filter and then simply apply a, inside the blur menu, you can apply a Gaussian blur, okay? So you can do that also, for example, see here not this much but let's say maybe something like this this so i guess in this maybe just want to blur it a bit okay so think of it like this away from the focal plane okay so that looks good maybe let's try to add a prop uh, in the foreground so we're going to select this whole area okay and maybe we can add some coffee beans but that probably won't go well with uh, this. Okay, let's type in something like scattered, small scattered leaves, okay? Let's see what it does. All right, let's wait for this. And yeah, no, it's not added leaves. It's actually added better looking blueberries this time. This doesn't look bad, but 
Let's just see the variations. Yeah, even this doesn't look bad to be frank. Uh, this is also fine. Yeah, I think this one looks probably the best, right? And can you see it's intelligent enough to again maintain that depth of field because anything absolutely in the foreground, okay, it's gonna be slightly out of focus because this is the main focal plane. So it does that to these leaves and the blueberries here. But as you move forward, they do get sharper. So this is something because I use this so much for my product and food shots, I've just noticed it's still a hit and miss. Remember, we are in Photoshop beta. This definitely is gonna get uh, better with time, okay? Finally, on this empty side, let's just try to add like a basket, okay? That's usually a prop that is used a lot. So we're just gonna type basket, let it do, let us, let's see what it fills it with, okay? If it at all does. All right, so it's given us four variations. Let's just have a look. I think probably this one is fine. This is not bad either. Yeah, something like this looks fine. I think the mistake I made was the selection that I made was too large, so the basket looks big. But right now I'm just doing this uh, to kind of just, you know, show you that yes, a lot of things can be done. Just would like to blur this a bit. So probably after some, you know, once it goes into the real Photoshop, you don't even have to do this. It'll be intelligent enough to get exactly the blur that fits perfectly with this photograph. Finally, the last thing that I want to show you is that it can even enhance your technical fallacies that you might notice in the shot. For example, one of the things that we notice when we have like, especially like a glass surface or reflections of the softbox, right? So one of the ways obviously is to soften the light, which is something I show in my product photography course. But let's say you have something like this. In this case, you can select this, okay? And you don't even like have to be too accurate. We can kind of do this in a rough manner and give this job to generate a fill. So we can say remove reflection or you can type in soften the reflection. And let's see what this gives us. All right, so you can see that that did a pretty flawless job, right? Just see the before and after. First of all, let's check the variations. No, they all have, so this one is gonna be the best. But you can see here, right? This is absolutely fantastic. And just by making some selections and typing in, we've gone from this to this. Now, of course, yeah, probably I would remove the basket one and even this one, but the, what it did with the foreground and reflection and the background backdrop here looks absolutely fantastic. So I hope that you enjoyed that. I wanna see you in the next video.